It's okay. Okay. Good morning. Uh, this is oh, mother and uh, not yet. Anyway, it's okay. lost. Okay. One more. Right. One minute. Oh, anyway, this is the last lecture of the series of the for the day <laughs> under <laughs> yeah. my English session. Uh, I will continue this lecture, but in Japanese uh, for some time. So after that, I will broadcast in English again. So anyway, uh, I will finalize the talk about kinematic alignment total nyaks for privacy. So uh, this, uh, this might be the last slide of yesterday. So there are two mainstream of the total nyaks for privacy. One is the uh, anatomical approach that is based on the resurfacing. So this serotopy, the base on the E, we uh, replace the uh, reproduce the patient for disease anatomy using the components. Uh, the, the key can work very well. That is the philosophy. It originated from the unicondylar arthroplasty and bicondylar uni arthroplasty and link the two uh, units and so called uh, bicondylar or total condylar knees, and then the revenue uh, evaluated to the CR or media people to uh, total yard capacity. This is the one concept. Another concept is, is a functional approach. Uh, this is originate from uh, the hinge joint. Hinge joint is a revolution to the uh, rolling trap so-called deep dish and post and calm, called so-called PS. So oh, there are two streams. So the which is the major uh, resection surgeon and uh, gap balancing surgeon is the mind in their brain a completely different image of the total neurosurgery. So so uh, we can do, both in the personalized alignment concept. Anyway, so kinematic alignment is an anatomical approach. So cut the same thickness or uh, the component thickness to uh, mimic the patient resident articular surface using the component. Eventually, the gap balancing and uh, anatomy, uh, uh, sorry, alignment uh, should be restored to the patient native situation. On the other hand, the functional approach is uh, aimed to uh, the recreate the not balanced gap throughout the motion, range of motion. So uh, using this one, now uh, we need to modify the uh, total alignment and morphology of the patient. So to uh, create the new balance bond, yeah, gap. So historically, it is uh, so-called gap balancing technique in the decided cut plane and thickness based on the distance from tibial cuttings surface and distal femur and posterior femur. Oh, anyway, so uh, now, so using the uh, current robot, the modern robot. So uh, previously, the only reflection length scan is extreme gap uh, adjusted, but using uh, the robot the cast, so we can adjust for extension 30, 46, and the respective, uh, respective angles in the knee. Anyway, now this is my theory. There are three elements in the knee. One is the morphology, uh, that means uh, bone surfaces, or shape of bone surface, and soft tissue, and the lightness. So uh, these three elements, creates uh, the new harmony for the individual individual patients. So morphology and soft tissue, uh, uh, there are tight connection, so relationship, because so-called four-bar linkage 
cell is if we decide the ligament situation around the knee, the morphology is produced automatically. Then, so uh, uh, this morphology means uh, the bone shape near the knee uh, because so the tibia and tibia are long bone. So we should uh, take into account the total alignment to the uh, angle of the, these long bones. So uh, once we decide the morphology is a sort of tissue and alignment, uh, uh, decide. And so one element decide other two elements and other two elements decide this one element. So, then eventually the kinematics so is decided by three key elements. So this kinematics should be different among the patients. Of course, basically the knee kinematics is a medial back motion, but some patients have the bipondular lower back motion, and some patients have the no roll back movement, and uh, some patients have the lateral pivot motion, especially the patient with the lateral operation. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, to respecting uh, these elements, so the aim of personalized alignment is to recreate the patient own kinematics. So, but starting point is different from the individual approaches. So based on the morphology, so character technique. So because in this technique, so reproduce the patient morphology. Then as a result, so the tissue balance and alignment are restored to the patient native situation. On the other hand, this so the tissue respecting approach, including the functional approach, is uh, based on the soft tissue balancing. So. Uh, if the soft tissue is balanced completely, uh, the morphology on the bone surface and the alignment can be restored uh, automatically. And the alignment is uh, based on the restricted kinematic alignment, is based on the alignment. So uh, this approach is based on the uh, bone cut. Uh, uh, should be done within the safe range. So, uh, so preventing the extreme alignments, so such as uh, eight degrees or ten degrees, the various alignments. So, so uh, the starting point is different, but the goal should be same. Uh, different for the so-called in the aiming to the top of the mountain, but the different routes. But uh, using uh, modern computer technique, we can manipulate every element interoperatively at all at once. So this is a very innovative. That is the value for the robotic surgery. So not only the precision of the bone cut, but also the measurement, interoperative measurements so of the morphology that means the bone cut thickness and uh, soft tissue balance so for the laxity and of course alive. We can get three elements at the same time so using the robot. This is a beneficial for the, using the robot. So uh, robot is of course to the bone cutting through in the same time so the robot is uh, used for the data correction. So automatically in the robot, so many, many data are saved in the robot. And uh, using this data, we can uh, analyze the patient, uh, the operation afterwards. So maybe in the future using the AI, because there are so many data, it's very difficult to migrate uh, for me and other mm -hmm. surgeons manipulate every data, so many data, more than 100 data in one operation. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so 
So uh, this is my opinion of the data using the erosion. Of course, I basically I do the major kinematic analysis for uh made the very very mild distribution, but so using the erosion, I measure the uh, MT LDFA and uh, MPTA and RS medic HK is it's calculated with MPTA minus LDFA and mechanical HKA. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, arithmetic HKA indicates the patient the constitutional HKA that is reported by Mark Desi. So then the plan, the cutting angle and uh and cut the femur as planned. So because the uh, mechanical uh, climatic element is the femur driven approach. So anyway, so decide the femur cut off. And then there are two tibia cut options. So one is uh, based on the uh cut the tibia as a plant. Mm -hmm. Uh, following the preoperative uh, alignment. And so for restricted kinematic alignment, in the restricted kinematic alignment, so we decide the preoperatively the tibial cutting angle and the femur cutting angle based on the boundary of the self range. And decide the plan based on latency, so called functional alignment. So interoperatively, as I said before, we can get laxity data using a robot. So uh, considering the laxity and then uh, re-plan during uh, the surgery. So there are the two plans. So uh, this uh, this is a sample of preoperative planning. Okay, in this case, we can cut the schema as it is parallel to the article surface, uh, but MPTA should be reduced up to five degrees because the setting of the rosa is up to five degrees in phases. Uh, Postural slope as well, so it should be up to seven or nine degrees. So uh, previously as uh, the calculated HKA, in the minor fiber beta, so we should reduce up to five degrees in terms of PTA and LDP and uh, HKF minus five degrees uh, to mm -hmm. three degrees. So this is my initial plan. This one. Yeah, yeah. So then interoperatively, it will start the mm -hmm. FEMA cut as it is. But sometimes uh, this value is not nine and seven, mm -hmm. sometimes nine and eight, or sometimes nine and six. At the time I reevaluate or so registration again, so and adjust. And sometimes I manipulate these angles and based on the thickness of the bone using a stylus interoperatively. Oh, then we can also uh, estimate the estimated bone cuts mm -hmm. uh, gear, gear balance. So uh, that is calculated as a sum of bone cut thickness and the laxity so that is measured the pre uh, before the bone cut, applying the vulgar stress and the vulgar stress. Oh, so anyway, so cut the femur like this. And the posterior cut should be the same in in the most case. Then this is the planned angle. If it is, everything is okay. And considering to the gap, it should be acceptable. So uh, mm -hmm. this is a very good phase, but sometimes it's mm -hmm. Uh, values are not so as we are uh, planned. So sometimes 10 and 6 and 10 and 10. Mm -hmm. At that time, I will check again the bone cut thickness and considering the preoperative situation and modify the bone cut thickness. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, because uh, uh, regards the media size, there are so in, in most places there are so uh, considerable amount of the bundles. So restoration point can affect the thickness of there. So anyway, so well, we can consider everything. So laxity and volcanic thickness and the alignment. Uh, then uh, so when I decide that uh, maybe that uh, uh, in the suitable situation of alignment of bone cut thickness and finally check using the stylus in the cutting thickness and then cut. So this is the uh, uh, interoperation cut as plant after the cut. So I'm sorry, it's <laughs> the end of the After the book up, I check the gap balancing. I wish it is not suitable. I will recut. Oh, uh, this is uh, uh, my sequence of the book cut. Okay, anyway, so I will finish my talk about uh, the UK and the key theory of current concept. So if we, you have any question, please send me an email or chat. Uh, please let me know by 